Come on, OBP, how we doing? Man, we could do better than that. OBP, how we doing? Come on. Awesome. Hey, I'm pumped. We're going to jump right into it. Like Pastor Olivia said, like that super cool video, WWE style entrance video said, my name is Sawyer Wilson, and I'm the lead student pastor at North Church. So what that means is I get to oversee our student ministries here at OKC. Make some noise if you're from OKC. And I also get to help Anthony oversee our North student ministry in Guthrie. Where are my Guthrie students at? Come on, come on. And I'm so grateful you're here. But before I am the student pastor at North Church, I am Olivia's husband and I am Tripp's dad. You've seen Olivia a couple times, but you haven't seen Tripp yet. Can I show you a photo of my family? Okay, here's a photo of my family. And you say, aww. You can say, here, we'll say it together. Say, aww. aww. That's my trippy boy. He's gonna be two, I almost said three, I'm getting ahead of myself. He's gonna be two in just a couple days. The same birthday, right? So let's tell him happy birthday on the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Thank you. So, so here's the deal. When I look at that photo, I think about, one, how much I love my family and how grateful I am. But two, I think about how much my life has changed over the past few years. If you were to look at my life a few years ago to today, it looks completely different. I, I'm married now, I wasn't a few years ago. I have a kid now, I didn't a few years ago. I have my dream job at a place that I hope I get to work for the rest of my life. Pastor Rodney and Shannon are back there. Say please, please, let Pastor Sawyer work here forever. Say forever. <laughs> He promised right there. <laughs> but seriously, I never would have guessed that five years ago. Because about five years ago, I made a decision to go after Jesus with everything that I had. I made a decision to fully and totally submit my life to Jesus. And that decision changed everything. I went from death to life. I went from darkness to light. I went from lost to found. I went from broken to healed. I went from purpose, no purpose, purposeless, to full of purpose. I went from anxiety to peace. The list goes on and on and on. And tonight, I wanna talk to you about your decision, about one decision. And one decision changes everything. I want you to write that down. Here at North Students, we take notes because we believe that note takers are Note takers are history makers. The title of the message tonight is that one decision changes everything. And that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. One decision. So can we make a deal right now? If you can make a deal with me, just nod, don't say anything. Here's the deal. For the next about 20 minutes, even if you don't wanna listen to what I have to say, I'm still glad that you're here but make sure that you don't disturb the people around you from listening. If that's our deal, can you just nod your head? Because I believe that God wants to speak to people in this room tonight. I believe that God wants to change lives tonight, okay? So that's our deal. Thank you for making that deal with me. About two months ago, I was in this room and I was praying for this night and I was praying for this message. And God placed a passage on my heart from Acts chapter 20. So if you have your paper Bible, if you have your phone, Go to Acts chapter 20, and, and when I got to this passage, it was kind of obscure, especially for a night like tonight, and I'm like, God, why is this the passage that you led me to for OBP 2024? And, and then I, I, I do a little more reading and looking, and then I realize that on our North Students Bible reading plan, which I highly recommend you join, Acts 20 is actually our Bible reading for today. And I just thought that that was so cool that two months ago, God knew exactly what we were gonna be reading together today, and he made it one of the key passages that we're gonna be talking about. So we're gonna be in Acts chapter 20. And, and a little bit of context, the book of Acts was written by who? Luke, it was written by a guy named Luke. And the second half of the book of Acts, the main character of the second half is a guy named Paul. Okay, say Paul. Paul. Say Paul. Paul. And Paul, 
Something you need to know about Paul is that he was a Pharisee, a Pharisee, which means that he adhered strictly to the Old Testament law. And Paul actually became one of the number one persecutors, one of the number one haters, one of the number one ops of the Christians, okay? Did I use that correctly? Okay, good. I've, I'm not kidding. I, I did not plan to use that word. I've never said it before in my life, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. Was that pretty good? Okay, thank you. So say Paul was an op. He was an op of the Christians. Here's something else you need to know about Paul. Back with me, sorry. We're gonna have fun, but here's, the, here's another deal. If you can make another deal, just nod. The other deal is we're gonna have fun, but then when I say back with me, you gotta focus back in. Got it? Okay. Something else you need to know about Paul. His name wasn't always Paul. Before he was Paul, his name was Saul. I know it's confusing. Say Paul. Paul. Say Saul. Saul. Say same guy. It's the same guy, okay, same guy. So if I say Paul, I'm talking about Paul. If I say Saul, I'm still talking about Paul because it's the same dude, okay? And here's the deal. He was the number one persecutor of Christians. He was hunting them down. He was throwing them into jail. He was doing all of these crazy things. And this was just a couple of years after Jesus had died on the cross, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. And Paul is trying to stop the spreading of the church of Jesus Christ. But then something happened. And we're gonna talk about that something together here in a little bit, so remember that. But we're gonna see one of Paul's stories from after his life was changed, when he was one of the main leaders of the church. And he went around preaching and teaching and planning churches, and he actually wrote 13 of the books that are in our New Testament today. And we're gonna look at one of Paul's stories in Acts chapter 20 from a time when he was teaching. So if you have your Bible, go to Acts chapter 20, and we're gonna start in verse seven. And remember, this is the passage that God placed on my heart two months ago for you all here tonight. So we're just gonna read this passage, Acts 20, verses seven through 12. It says this. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. I promise I will not talk until midnight. My boss is here, I can't. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Verse nine, seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus. When you get home, say, Mom, Dad, thank you for not naming me Eutychus. Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Say, ooh. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. Paul's like, this is no big deal. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. Let's close our eyes and pray for just a minute. Dear God, would you speak to all of us here tonight, Lord? Would you touch hearts and change lives in the way that only you can? God, you know exactly what every student in here needs to hear, Lord. So would these words not be mine but yours, and would they speak directly to their hearts and change their lives? God, we know that you're in this place with us, and we're so grateful for you. God, would you speak through me tonight? Would you set aside any pride and remind me and all of us here that this is just for you? We love you, God. It's in your name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. So what happened in this story? Paul preached all night, and then a kid named Eutychus fell asleep because Paul had preached so long that he literally fell asleep and fell out of the window from the third story and died, like dead, dead. So Paul, I'm just imagining, I don't know for sure, but I'm imagining that Paul probably took his time going down the stairs. I'm a, da Dallas is gonna be mad at me because I promised him I would stay on the stage. I'll come back, Dallas. He probably just, I'm imagining Paul, like if, if somebody's like dead right there, I'm running. But Paul was probably like, I'm just imagining Paul just taking his time down the stairs. And then Paul threw himself on Eutychus' dead body and raised him back to life in the name of Jesus. That's a crazy story. And, and all the people were rejoicing, and Paul acted like it was no big deal. And when I first read that story, I was like, God, why is that one you want me to share at one big party? And then God placed a question in my heart, and that question is, how many young people have fallen asleep to the gospel and are spiritually dead? How many people in this room tonight 
have fallen asleep for so long that you are spiritually dead and you're oblivious to the gospel, you're oblivious to the good news, you're oblivious to Jesus Christ, and you're conditioned to the world. And I'm not asking you to raise your hand, but I bet there's some people whose hearts are burning a little bit right now. Because when I was your age, I was one of those people. Even though I knew about Jesus, I said I believed in Jesus, and I came to church at this very church, I was spiritually dead. But there's good news. I'm believing that tonight God wants to wake you up. I'm believing that tonight God wants to resurrect you from being spiritually dead and make you alive. I'm believing that God wants to pick you up from being broken and made you whole. I'm believing that God wants to take you from being lost and say you are now found. I believe that God wants to change your life tonight. If you're with me, say I'm with you. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. For me, my life change five years ago started with one decision, and that one decision changed everything. The same thing happened for Paul, Saul Paul. One decision changed everything for him. Remember, I told you that Paul, when he was still called Saul, was the number one op of the Christians. He was hunting them down, throwing them in jail. And in Acts chapter seven, so if you have your Bible, you can go to Acts nine, because that's where we're gonna be. Acts nine, but in Acts chapter seven, we meet a young, na- a young man named Saul, and it tells us he's a Pharisee, and he's watching other people kill a Christian named Stephen. And it doesn't just say that he's watching, it's saying he's watching it with approval. He's like, yeah, get him. Paul, you're weird, bro. Saul, come on, dude. And he's watching them kill him. Then. On Acts chapter nine, we meet Saul again, and this is what it says in Acts chapter nine, verse one. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. Pause! Didn't we just read about a dude named Paul that preached all night so long that a young man fell asleep dead? How did we get from from persecutor Saul to preacher Paul? What happened in between this verse and Acts chapter 20? Something big must have happened. He was eager to kill the Lord's followers, so he went to the high priest. That'd be like if you went to like Pastor Rodney and you were like, Pastor Rodney, you gotta help me do something, okay? And Paul requests letters addressed to the synagogues. Those were the Jewish worship uh, centers where they would teach and worship together. He requested letters to the synagogues in Damascus asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. The way, We'll, we'll talk about the way a couple times tonight. The way, and when it says the way, it's talking about following Jesus. Followers of the way is what Christians were called before the word Christians even existed. So followers of the way, followers of Jesus, it's the same thing. Following the way equals following Jesus. Paul wanted to arrest any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Verse three, as he was, was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. So while this was happening, The Lord spoke to a follower of the way, a follower of Jesus, in Damascus, where Saul was headed. This guy's name was Ananias. And he spoke to Ananias, and he said, Ananias, Saul is coming here, and I need you to go lay hands on him and pray for him so that he can be healed from this blindness. And Ananias was very hesitant because he knew about Saul. He knew that Saul was hunting down Christians and arresting Christians and throwing them in jail. He knew that Saul was a bad dude if you were a follower of the way, so he said, Uh uh-uh, God, but then God told Ananias, no, Saul is gonna be the person that I use to take the gospel to all people. 
Saul is gonna be the person that I'm gonna use to take this message of Jesus and expand it from the Jews to the Gentiles. That means pretty much all of us in this room. Anybody that's not Jewish, that's a Gentile. And Saul is the person that God wanted to use to spread that message to all of us. So Ananias agreed, and this is where we pick up in Acts chapter nine, verse 17. So Ananias went and found who? Ananias went and found who? Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. Verse 20, and immediately, would you say immediately? And immediately, say it again. Immediately. immediately, he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues, saying, he is indeed the son of God. All who heard him were amazed. Isn't this the same man who caused such devastation among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, they asked? And didn't he come here to arrest them and take them in chains to the leading priests? Saul's preaching became more and more powerful, and the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. This is Saul's moment. This is his decision, and that decision changed everything. Verse 20 tells us that he immediately began preaching that Jesus was the Son of God. He immediately began preaching the good news, and it all started with that one decision. At the beginning of Acts chapter 9, Saul had a decision to make. Because he had been hunting down Christians, he had been opposing Jesus, he hated Jesus, and he had a decision to make. Are you with me? He had a decision to make. He had to choose in that moment, am I gonna obey God or am I gonna disobey God? Am I gonna give my life to him or am I gonna keep living my own way? Am I gonna choose life or am I gonna keep going in death? Am I gonna wake up or am I gonna stay asleep? Am I gonna choose light or am I gonna choose darkness? Am I gonna choose wholeness or am I gonna stay broken? Am I gonna choose the way of Jesus or am I gonna keep following the way of the world? And Saul chose to follow the way of Jesus and tonight is the night for some of you to make that same decision. We have to decide between the way of the world and the way of Jesus. We have to decide between the way of the world and the way of Jesus. Of Jesus. I'm gonna say it again because it's that important. We have to decide between the way of the world and the way of Jesus. You have to decide for yourself. And here's the kicker you can't have both. You cannot have both. Trust me, I tried to have both for years. Saul, in his own twisted way, was trying to have both. Tons of people have tried to have both, and they've settled for a cheap, fake relationship with Jesus that amounts to nothing. You cannot have both. You have to choose. So what are you gonna choose? What are you gonna choose? Saul decided to follow Jesus, and that decision changed everything. Some of you tonight, your everything is gonna be changed when you decide to follow Jesus. Trying to have both leads to this twisted sort of theology that's known as cheap grace. I'm gonna nerd out for a second. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he's a, a German theologian. He wrote a book called Cost of Discipleship. And in this book, he talks about this concept of cheap grace. And pretty much what cheap grace is, it's trying to have all the benefits of Jesus without actually counting the costs of following Jesus. It's trying to get all the good stuff without saying you want any of the difficult stuff. Oh, I only want what Jesus can give me instead of seeing what I can do for Jesus. And cheap grace is not the real gospel. It's not the full gospel, at least. Here's the deal. When you try to have both, guess what? You become a lukewarm Christian. And Jesus had something to say about lukewarm Christians in Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. It says this. This is Jesus talking to a lukewarm church full of lukewarm Christians. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot, I wish you were either one or the other. Verse 16. So because you are, say it with me, lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. I don't ever want Jesus to say that about me. 
I don't ever wanna be a lukewarm anything. I especially don't wanna be a lukewarm Christian. You have a decision to make, the way of the world or the way of Jesus. You cannot have both. I wanna show you what it's like when you try to have both. So let's say that this is the way of Jesus and this is the way of the world. This is the way of? 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 And I say, man, Jesus is awesome. And, and Pastor Sawyer said that when I choose to follow the way of Jesus, I, have, I can have peace in my life and I want some of that. But I do also like some of those bad habits that I used to have when I was following the ways of the world. So I think I'll keep those too. But, but, but they told me at, at church that when you choose the way of Jesus, you have overwhelming joy in your life and, and that you can be joyful in all circumstances. And I think that sounds pretty nice. But you know, some of those friends who are sucking a lot of the joy out of my life, they're pretty cool and I'm worried I won't have any other friends, so I'm gonna stay friends with them. And, and I know that Jesus promises me something greater than the riches of this world and whatever's greater than this world, that sounds pretty awesome. But I also really like money and I wanna keep making money and I'm gonna idolize it with everything that I have. And Jesus promises you that he has a plan and a purpose for your life, and that that plan and the purpose is, is, is something that you can't even imagine or orchestrate yourself. But this is gonna hurt some of y'all. But I love that guy. I love that girl. We're in love, we're meant to be, so I'm gonna stay with them. Eventually, you reach a point where you have to choose. Eventually, I can't go up this ladder any further trying to be on both, I'm gonna fall. If you try to balance both the way of Jesus and the way of the world, something has to give. You have to make a choice. Which one is it gonna be? The way of Jesus or the way of the world? But here's the deal. When you choose the way of Jesus, you stack up riches in heaven that nothing on earth can measure. You gain the free gift of eternal life because of what Jesus did on the cross for you. So I don't know about you, but I'm choosing this way. I'm choosing the way of Jesus. Is there anybody with me? I want to share a couple things with you. John 3.16, it's gonna be on the screen. For God so loved the? For God so loved the? That includes you. That includes you. Now's the time to really focus. There's been a little chitter chatter, but you guys have been pretty good on the deal. Now's the time to lock it in. For God so loved the? That he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. So that means that all I have to do to, 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 or to have this is to believe in Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Romans 10, 13, Paul writes this. For all, everyone, every single person who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Even me, with all the terrible stuff I did in my past, even me, with all the addictions that I have, even me, with all the trauma in my life, even me, with every bad choice I've ever made, yes, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In case you still don't believe me, check this out. In Luke chapter 23, Jesus is on the cross and he's carrying the sins of you and me and all of humanity. And on either side of him are two common crim criminals, two people that were being punished for something that they actually did. And while Jesus was hanging on the cross for nothing that he ever did and everything that we did, he's sitting there. And one of the criminals starts blaspheming and cursing at Jesus. And the other criminal says, what's wrong with you? Don't you know that this is the Son of God? And he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answers him right then. Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This guy had sinned every moment of his life. And then right before he died, he gave his life to Jesus. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Today you receive eternal life. Today you are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen? It's 
almost decision time. The way of the world is pretty fun for a while. But then guess what? I wish I could knock this over without killing the bass player right now. It doesn't last. But this, the way of Jesus, it's not going anywhere. I'm choosing what lasts. I'm deciding to follow what lasts. When it comes to the choice between the way of the world and the way of Jesus, I'm choosing the way of Jesus every time. And there's some of you that you're gonna have the chance to make that decision right here, right now. I want every single person in the room, close your eyes, bow your head. Close your eyes, bow your head. <clears throat> Here's the deal. I realize that it can be difficult to choose the way of Jesus if you don't understand how Jesus feels about you. And it told us in John 3, 16 that God so loved the world, which includes you. And just to show you how God feels about you and how much God knows you, I wasn't planning on reading this, but with your eyes closed, I'm gonna read you a psalm. It's a, it's a book in the Bible full of prayers and songs. And I wanna read you a portion of Psalm 139. Just earlier, as I was praying over tonight, I just felt like I needed to read this because I believe there's one person in here that maybe just needs to be reminded about how God feels about you. So with eyes closed, no one looking around, would you just listen to this? Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and you know when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You know my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. For the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. I'm gonna keep going, but this, this next portion, if you've ever felt like you have no place or no purpose on this earth, I just wanna speak this truth over you. This next portion is how God feels about you. Eyes still closed. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. You, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Eyes still closed. That's how God feels about you. He knew you before you were even a blip on the radar. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He made you wonderfully, fearfully, beautifully in his image. And everyone in this room, your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, and right now there's gonna be some people that make a decision, a decision to change everything, a decision to give your life to Jesus. And you may say, well, Pastor Sawyer, this is my first time hearing about Jesus, and I don't know much about him. That's okay. 
You may say, well, Pastor Sawyer, I've been coming to church for years, but I, I've missed lots of chances to give my life to Jesus. That's okay. You don't have to know everything. Here are a few things that you do need to know. Number one, God is real and he is perfect and he loves you. Number two, you and I and every other person that has ever lived except for Jesus has sinned against God. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. But God loved you and I so much that he came down to earth and lived the sinless life as a man named Jesus. But though he knew no sin, he became sin and died on the cross, bearing your sins and mine and the sins of every person that ever lived. But he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he arose from the grave. He defeated death, hell, sin, and the grave. And when we believe in that in our heart and we confess it with our mouth, we are saved. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you wanna make a decision to give your life to Jesus, if you wanna make a decision to change everything, if you wanna make a decision to to change your eternity, would you just raise your hand right now and look up at me? Would you just raise your hand and look at me? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You can put your hands down. And I ain't counting those hands, because guess what? We don't count hands, we count steps of obedience. So if you raised your hand and you gave your life to Jesus, on the count of three, I want you to come up and meet me right here so I can pray with you up close and personal. If you gave your life to Jesus tonight, on the count of three, would you come up to this altar and the rest of us are gonna celebrate. One, two, three, come on! Praise God, praise God, praise God. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. If you decided to give your life to Jesus, keep coming. Here's the deal. I wanna pray for you real quick. And everybody that's in the seats, I want you to reach out your hands and pray for them as well. And then we're gonna sing just a little bit of a, an old hymn, okay? And I want you to really understand these words, okay? So let's pray real quick. Dear God, thank you for every student that made the decision to give their life to you, God. Thank you for every student, every teenager that's in here that made one decision that changes everything. Thank you for every person in this room that's eternity was changed tonight. Jesus, we're so grateful for what you did on the cross. We're so grateful for what you've done for us. We're so grateful for who you are. We love you, Jesus. We celebrate all of these eternities, all of these lives that were changed here tonight. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. If you're in your seats, you can stand up right in your seat. But especially those of you that made a decision, we're going to sing this together. And I want you to understand that you have decided to follow Jesus and there's no opportunity, no chance for you to turn back because you're not going back to the way of the world. You're sticking to the way of Jesus. Amen. So stay right here in the front, and will you sing this hymn with me? Let's sing it. I had decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Come on, sing it. Don't turn it back. You just decided to step out in faith in front of 700 people. You can sing a few words. Sing it. Come on. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back. Here's the deal. Nobody move, especially you people in the front, who I'm so proud of and I'm celebrating with. 
Here's the deal. You just made a decision that changes everything. Everything. But here's the deal. One of my mentors, he once said, the first decision is the hardest, but the next decision is the most important. So what you're about to do next, what I'm gonna challenge you and ask you to do next is just as important, but it's gonna be a little bit harder because it's fairly easy to raise your hand and it's, it's a little bit harder to come up to the front, but it's a little bit harder to actually step out and do something about it on a different day. And here's the deal, all of you that gave your life to Jesus tonight or rededicated your life to Jesus tonight, we celebrate and we rejoice. And we wanna tell you that your first step of obedience in following the way of Jesus is to go public with your faith in water baptism. I wanna share a passage with you, especially those of you that are here up in the front. Would you look at either screen? It says this in Matthew chapter 13, or I think it's Matthew three. Matthew three, verse 13. Jesus left Galilee and went to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John kept objecting and said, I ought to be baptized by you. Why have you come to me? Jesus answered, for now, this is how it should be, because we must do all God wants us to do. Then John agreed. So Jesus was baptized, and as soon as he came out of the water, the sky opened, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. Then a voice from heaven said, this is my own dear son, and I am well pleased with him. Here's the deal, eyes back on me, eyes back on me. Here's the deal, water baptism is a public profession of your inward decision to follow Jesus. It's a symbol of you bearing your old self, the one that followed the ways of the world, and rising up in your new self, the one that's following the way of Jesus. It's a symbol of you saying, I'm burying my old self in the grave, and I'm about to come up and dance on that grave that I used to live in. That's you saying, I'm getting rid of the old, and I'm going with the new. And I've got good news for you. I've got good news for you. We're doing water baptisms next Wednesday here in OKC and in Guthrie. And we wanna get you signed up to be water baptized tonight. So we're gonna have some fun and worship a little bit. But I want all of you, and this is the part that we're gonna celebrate. I want all of you, if you're wanting to go public in your faith in Jesus and be water baptized next week, or if you made a decision to follow Jesus, we wanna know. I want you to go out those doors. We have leaders ready to record your information and help you get signed up for baptism. All of you in the front if you want to be water baptized next week or if you gave your life to Jesus tonight we want to know would you go on the count of three one two three go 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 go